Welcome back to MMA Oddsbreaker. This week we're talking to Kyle Bradley. He's getting ready to fight a Legacy Fighting Championships 32 against Derek Krantz. Kyle, how are you, bud? I'm doing well, Frank. How are you doing, man? You know, it's a good day. It's a good day. Uh, a lot of MMA going on this weekend, obviously. A lot of MMA coming up here pretty quick. It seems like that there's a ton of cards going on every week. As a fan of the sport, do you find that's hard to keep up with everything else that's going on? Oh, absolutely. Like, that's exactly what we were talking about that the other day. Um, so many fighters, and all of them are talented, and so many great organizations. And, you know, it, it's, it's fun to be able to just flip to and find something to watch or, or maybe hear about or, or read about all the time. But it's also kind of hard to keep up with everything all the time. I don't know who's fighting when or where or what's going on a lot of the time. You know, we all know the UFC higher-ups, uh, Sean Shelby and Joe Silva and, and Dana White, all watch Legacy Fighting Championships because a lot of the guys have been getting pulled from Legacy over to the UFC. Do you think uh -huh. that the UFC brass is having the same problem that Mick and Colin do, where they're trying to watch all these other fights and find all these other fighters and try to get these other guys that, to come into the ranks? Yeah. I don't know, man. You know, you know, Joseph. That's that's his job, man. And 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 those guys. That's how they make. You know, that's what they do all the time. And I remember uh, Monty Cox told me one time a long time ago. He said, uh, "It doesn't. You know, if, if you're if you're a guy who who might be a prospect, chances are Joe Silva seen you fight somewhere. And and I think that you know those guys do a real good job of finding talent. And I know uh, the guys at Legacy do the same thing. That they, they they find a lot of talent in that. Like you said, the fact that the UFC is pulling from legacy a lot just just shows that that those guys are, are good at their jobs, and I think I just think they do it so well, you know. Yeah, they they do. They've been doing a really good job with their matchmaking too, uh, in getting these new guys in the ranks to keep keep everything refreshed because it is it is an injury based sport. So there's a lot of guys going to come in and are going to get hurt during training camps, and then not be able to compete. How many times in your career? You're right now. You're eighteen and nine. How many times in your career have you ha have you had an opponent change? Due to his, due to him getting injured, plenty of times. I'm actually 19 and nine. Uh, I don't know. Some of the websites are a little bit different. Um, it's, it's happened plenty of times. Probably too many. You know, I can't really think of any. Uh, a lot of off, my, off the top of my head, but I know I've, I've actually done it a few times myself. I was uh, scheduled to fight Sam Stout one time. Broke my hand about six weeks prior, and uh, Felipe had no ended up stepping in for me. But um, so I know you know it's part of the sport. I mean, it's rough what we do. It, everything from the from the actual fight training to the strength and conditioning part is, is pretty violent. So, you know, tweaks happen and, and strains happen and breaks happen and these things happen, you know. Now, Legacy Fighting Championships 30, 32 is going to be in uh, Borgia City, Louisiana. How far away is that from you and where you live now? Uh, it's about five. It's about a five-hour drive okay. from me. So other side of the state pretty much. Is it? Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, you know, I'm in the, the south Louisiana, southeast Louisiana, and that's, uh, uh, I guess, northwest. Yeah. So, even though it's a five-hour drive, will you still have a, a huge amount of, of family and friends coming along to watch you fight? You know, uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can make a road trip out of it. Uh, it's been a while since we did a big one, you know, like a, a, a fight part of this magnitude. So, in, in right around the summertime is, is whenever I can usually round up a good crew to go. We had, you know, 20 or 30 people in Vegas one time for one of my fights. And um, yeah, I'm hoping we can get that going. But if not, you know, I've I fought up there a few times, and in Lake Charles, I have I have people he, uh, sending me messages on Facebook and this and that, telling me, you know, that was, you know, I saw, I saw you fight this guy here. It was one of the fights I've seen. I, I can't wait to watch the fight up here. So that's kind of cool too, you know. Yeah, it's always good to have fans from all over, the, especially all over your home state. Um, to yeah, to yeah. Watch your fight. Now let's break down Derek Krantz. He's your opponent coming up. You're 19, like you corrected me. You're 19 and nine. And Derek is yeah. fourteen and eight. Uh, how do you see Derek when you watch tape on him? How do you think? What do you think he's going to try to do to you once you guys get inside that cage? I think uh, I, you know, I have a couple of friends who fought him. A couple of my training partners, uh, Rich Clemente fought him, Dustin Poirier fought him. Uh, both of them told me he's strong. You know, they're like he's strong, he's strong as a bull. So I'm like, you know, that's kind of what I'm expecting. He he's he, he's good on the ground. And he's very, very strong, and he's pretty tenacious. You know, he's he's a forward coming guy, likes to fight coming forward, and so that's what I expect. I expect kind of 
him to try to meet me head on and and, and just be the the stronger guy in in the, all the exchanges. Now he fought Poirier and Clemente back in the well, he fought Clemente in two thousand nine December, and then Poirier in, in March of two thousand ten. So it's been a while ago since those two have competed against. So it was actually back to back losses for him. Yeah, uh, he got submitted by armbar both times by both guys. So it's uh, it, it uh, at the time that was his his biggest way of losing was getting caught in a submission. Uh, do you yeah. do you think he's really improved that much since since he fought both your your uh, uh, teammates? Yeah, I have to believe he has. Um, I had a a guy, you know, that I, that I don't know really well. I guess kind of trying to ingratiate himself to me. And was basically just telling me, I mean, I rolled with that guy, uh, you know, two months ago, and he's he's good. He submitted me five times in five minute round, and uh, so you know, I, I think that's probably what his, he has a little bit of a layoff right now. I think he's probably getting down to some some grappling and and just working on his strength training. And I, I think he's probably going to be, you know, pretty well versed on the ground when I meet him. We're speaking with Kyle Bradley right now here on MMA Oddsbreaker. That's Derek, and we're talking about Derek Krantz, who's fighting in uh, Legacy Fighting Championships 32. Kyle, what else has been new with your training since it seems like now that the sport changes overnight? Like every every month, there's a new guy coming out, a new technique that's been shown on one of the big shows, whether it's on Access Television, Spike TV, or, or on one of the UFC Fox cards or pay per view. That all of a sudden now everyone's trying to do it. Like, like you know, when uh, Anderson Silva and Leo Machida came out with the front kick. All of a sudden, uh-huh. the next series of fights, everybody was trying to do a front kick to knock somebody out. What's the what's happening in your training? Not necessarily a particular technique, but what's new in your training in, say, the last six months or a year? Well, I'd say the last uh, year, maybe even 18 months, um, I had gotten away from from my grappling. I became almost a, a pure boxer, you know, a wrestler and a boxer. And uh, I just didn't enjoy grappling anymore. And, and about, uh, it must have been about 14 months ago, I went to Tim Crater. And I, and I said, look, man, I want to work on my jiu-jitsu. That's all I want to really do, you know, for a little while. And that's 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 why I haven't fought in a while. That's all I, I do. That's not all I do, but you know, that's that's what I, I concentrate on now is my grappling, my jiu-jitsu, and 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 tightening some things up. And, and it's it's really helped me a lot. And in this painting camp, I'm, I'm lucky to have guys like Tim Crater and a black kid, one of his black belts named Josh Mason, who helped me a lot. And then obviously Rich Clemente and Dustin when he comes down, I train with him. And, you know, Rich is, Rich has taken the last 18 months or so and worked on his wrestling. So he's, he showed me a lot of stuff and, and really, you know, he's upped his wrestling game so much that he's hard to deal with, really hard to deal with now. So, you know, just the grappling part of it from, from the wrestling to the jiu-jitsu part is what I've been really working on. You know, that's, Kyle, that's, that's a big thing that a lot of guys, wrestlers uh, in general, you know, from my standpoint, we come in and we, we, all of a sudden, how to strike, and you can't take us down, so we just stand there, and we're like, okay, now all of a sudden, we become boxers, and we have the, it's the wrestling problem in MMA, and I was trying to see uh-huh. a lot more grapplers have the same problem, because, like, we're so comfortable on the ground that if you do take us down, we're not worried about getting there, so we're just going to stand here and strike until you take us down, and then it ends up, you know, uh-huh. losing or getting caught on the way in, so it's, you know, I'm a big believer now that I've retired, uh, <laughs> that to, uh, to whatever brought you to the show is what you got to stick with, you know? We saw it with Hoyce Gracie. He was a grappler. He didn't try to change anything. He just became a grappler, and, and that's what he stuck with. I know that the, the attitudes and, and people are more well-rounded than they used to be, and, of course, a, a wrestler you know, like Dan Henderson can knock out somebody very easily with his big right hand, yeah. but he still uses wrestling you know, as his main focal point. So I'm glad to hear that oh, you're grappling. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the biggest way to do it is to stick with what you know. Do you think Derek has, has – from when he fought in 2010, your teammates till now, do you think he's gone back to what bottom of the show? Do you think he's still fading away and trying to be something that he's not? Well, uh, you know, I can't really, I can't really speak intelligently on that, to be honest. Um, all I can go on is, and, and I want you to know this too, what my, my, um, my habit has been throughout my career is, is not to dive too deeply into what the other guy does. Because I know every, nearly every fight, I have a different approach to what I'm doing. So I don't, I don't really look. I, you know, I look at, at at some some general overall basic points, but I don't really try to dissect them too much. Because at the end of the day, I still have to fight my fight, you know. And uh, I can pick up some things that I'd like like to do to to maybe if I want to keep it on the feet to, to keep it on the feet. But at the same time, I'm, I don't really like try to get into what it is he's doing right now or how I'm going to counter it. So I know I just got to fight my fight. So I have to imagine. You know he's he's gonna do what he does, which is be a big, strong, 
top heavy guy, you know, try to get on top and try to beat me up that way. Well, Kyle, thanks for coming out here with uh, MMA Icebreaker. I appreciate it. Uh, good luck against Derek Krantz. Come up here on Legacy Fighting Championship 32, June 20th. Of course, that fight can be seen on Access TV. Kyle, thanks for coming out here. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Appreciate it, Frank. Thanks a lot, man.